Hey, what's up, guys? Today I'm going to be going over how to use Source Tree with Git. If you're new to Subversion, um, I recommend you go over some of these keywords. If you are a visual learner, don't worry. I'll be going over this flowchart in just a second. If you find that you're not familiar with any of these keywords on the left, don't worry. I'll leave them up here so you can pause the video at any time. Alright, first I'd like to go over the circular process that happens up here. And really it could, uh, it's, and really it starts at either the commit or the fetch step. And then, um, let's say if you fetch first, you're going to merge, and then you commit, and then you push, and then somebody else will fetch, merge, commit, and push. And now I'm going to go over this example here on the right. On this left side, you have Joe and Joe's computer files and on the right side you have Jill and Jill's computer files and then in the middle you're going to have your master repository and this is going to be usually a website like Bitbucket or SourceForge.net and let's go down here at the bottom because we're going to be working from the bottom and going up top and we're going to start at Joe's in Joe's files and he's going to start at the commit step now let's say that Joe modifies some files and then he commits them and as soon as he commits he creates a new node and these blue nodes are are going to be the master repository uh, like the main branch it's going to be the main branch of the subversion and then he goes in the next step and then he pushes after he commits because if you remember after the commit comes push and then he puts it on the master repository. Now let's look over at Jill's files. Let's say that Jill also made some, uh, modified some files, and then she then commits those files, and then she creates Jill's nodes. Jill's node. Now, after she does that, she's going. After she commits, she's going to want to push. If she tries to push, Source Fork is going to come up with an error and tell her that she needs to com that she needs to fetch first, um, and so she'll th or that she'll have to merge first, and so she'll have to fetch. Hit the fetch command on Source Tree or any other um, visual client that you're working with uh, to use Git, and um, she'll have to fetch, and it'll pull in all of the nodes that have been committed by all the users, and right now there's only Joe, so it pulls in Joe's node. To her, to her computer files, and then she'll have to merge them, uh, merge those two nodes. Now, if she hit, you'll notice this other arrow that skips the, uh, the Joe's node. Um, what I'm trying to communicate with that is that it fetches and it also merges, so it, it does two steps in one. Then, moving on, after you, after she merges, she commits the merged files. And then she has Jill's node. And again, it's remember the the blue is the um, the main branch. And this again, uh, I don't think I mentioned it, but this purple circle over here, this purple color, um, represents that it's her branch, like uh, another branch, um, not of the main branch of the repository. And it should be these colors as well within Source Tree. And moving on, uh, Jill decides to push those committed files to the master repository, and now it's in the middle. And then let's say that Joe over here he pulls those changes, and remember the pull. It does the um, the fetch and the merge, and again up here at the top it does the fetch and the merge, and then he commits them and then again it's purple because um, he has to uh, merge his files and then he he pushes and it's on the main repository as the main branch and that's the whole process and, it, and then it continues to snake back and forth and I'll go ahead and open up source tree 
All right, now to show you an example of um, how to use source tree, um, I'm going to be uh, showing you an example of of uh, two people working um, with source tree with Git um, and using a, uh, a repository um, from Bitbucket. I'm going to start off by cloning a repository and um, pasting in the the address from that I have from Bitbucket, and then the the destination path is going to be on the desktop, and I'm going to put it inside of Joe's files um, folder root. Alright, and the root is going to be in this area on the left side of source tree. And the root just means top level. And then I'm going to clone again. And this is going to be Jill's files. Alright, now Following along with uh, my previous example on the flowchart, I'm going to make a new file, file1, and go inside of it, and type in Joe's modification, modification, right. All right. I'm going to drag and drop that inside of Joe's files. You click a few times in here until it shows up. All right, now we have file text. You, um, it, um, let me explain real quick. Down here at the bottom, you'll see file status, log history, and search. Now, file status lets you uh, look at all of the the file modifications um, that have been made since you started the repository. Um, right now we see a little blue circle with question mark which means that it's right there it says it's not tracked. That means that um, it is not on the repository. You can right click and you can ignore these file uh, ignore this file. You could ignore the exact name, which would be this exact file. All files with this extension, which would be dot all files uh, with dot text. Or you could ignore all the files beneath this folder. For example, if it were within a textures folder, or a models folder, or an assets folder, you could ignore that entire folder uh, from ever showing this working copy changes box. And we're going to hit cancel because we don't want to ignore this. Uh, we want to add it to the um, to the stage changes area up here. So you select it and you hit this arrow up here. This will do one at a time. This will do all of them. We just we just need to do one. You'll see it has a green plus there. It means it's added. We can go to log history and look at our node says it's uncommitted. Let's go ahead and do the first step that I talked about earlier. Um, commit new. Give it a quick message. New file. Um, you can also in this window you can also add uh, working copy changes. You can add files into the staged area uh, from here as well as well as remove things. For example, if I wanted to remove this file, I could click that. But well, let's go ahead and put it back up and hit commit on the bottom right. Now that we've got that, we need to do the next step, which is push. I'm going to push it onto the master branch. Usually it's going to ask you for a password. I believe my source tree has mine. Uh, remembered, so I don't need to do that, and we are good to go. It has been pushed, and uh, you can see in the log history, this area right here, this is all of the changes that have been made within this commit. 
Now let's go ahead and go over to Jill's files. In Jill's files, in the log section, she, it's, she doesn't have anything. It's completely empty. So what she needs to do first is to fetch or to pull. There we go. Finally got it. All right. Maybe it's because I needed to hit pull because there wasn't anything already in her files to merge with. Or there wasn't a pre-existing branch on her in her files. Anyways, continuing with continuing with my example. Um, she goes into the file one text and she's going to make a modification. She's going to type Jill's modification. Say close. Alright, now we should see here that we have in the log history section we have some uncommitted changes. And it lets me know that this file, yellow, has been modified and it shows here on the right which lines have been modified. go ahead and add that modification click on commit file modified commit and we have a little one uh, a warning symbol with a number one on the push which means that there is one new node to push so we will push and send it to the repository online. Alright, success. Now over to Joe's files and we are going to fetch. Fetch from all remotes. And it sees uh, that we found one new node, one new commit and notice that the uh, these two nodes look a little bit different. They look like the same color except this node has white in the middle and this top one doesn't. The white in the middle means that this is the one that you are on. You can also tell by the bold text of the message section, of the, the description section. So we click on the top uh, um, click on the top node and we click on pull. This will pull from the origin. Um, uh, this will uh, merge. This will pull and merge from. Um, if I was on another branch, it would merge. But since I'm on the same branch, it will just um, make me match up to that one. So I will do that. And then I will commit. Um, blah, blah, blah. And all right. And now that uh, Joe has um, downloaded and, or updated his uh, working files um, and he's uh, ready to get to work and that's basically it from there on it would just be a back and forth process of people uploading their their modifications to files and their their um, their changes and other people downloading them and updating their files and that's about it